Mwalimu wa math, kuna mtu nafaa kukujia hapa size. Somebody should be coming for. But again, welcome if you have been with us since the beginning or the beginning. Welcome back. My name is Valentine or at Color Me Val. But if this is your first encounter with either me or the channel or the show, you are in the perfect place. The Lydia's Breakfast Show in this here town, in this here city. There's a country. Since now, President likes to country hope or continent hope. I'm about to give us more ranking, <coughs> not part of ranking. Hashtag is MCM, a day where we crush on our kings. And of course, I can tell you how to interact with us at Y254 on Facebook, Y254 channel on X, Y254 underscore channel on the gram, and them others, that's Threads, TikTok, and YouTube. In case you want to watch an interview again and again, like you just can't get enough of it, or you miss it, but for any reason or the other. Now we're going to enter a very interesting conversation. It started with an intro, then we brushed on politics and kind of slid into climate to w actually bring this to a wonderful open. So we're transitioning very smoothly because the conversation we're going to have with these two very handsome gentlemen, if I may add, they have a lot of spunk in them. And I think that's how I like them this morning. On a Monday, nothing is blue except this set or other parts of the set and that guy's shirt. But let me allow them to introduce themselves. <laughs> good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. good morning. How are you? I'm fine. I'll uh, start with you. What is your good name? Yes, my name is Brian Kitenji. I'm mm -hmm. the executive director of the Policy Action Initiative, mm -hmm. which is a very, very unique organization that brings together young people who are committed to changing the world and bringing up intricate solutions to solve the problems that our society faces. Mm -hmm. And we usually do it through policy research, policy analysis, and a little bit of capacity building because you have to train people mm -hmm. and you have to ensure that people are aware of both the proposed mm -hmm. and the current policies that we have in place, mm -hmm. specifically around four thematic areas, mm -hmm. sustainable development, mm -hmm. environmental action. Mm -hmm. And we know that the environment is a very big thing because if you don't take care of the environment, you're not going to be healthy. Mm -hmm. So uh, the environment encompasses almost everything about life. And aside from those two, there's also about sustainable peace mm -hmm. and security and also democratic go governance. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we are here because we have freedom of speech. We have mm -hmm. freedom of association. That's where I was able to move from where I am in Georgia to come here. Mm -hmm. So we, we combine all these four areas and usually do a little bit of analysis, research, and capacity building mm -hmm. to ensure that we involve more young people in governance processes. Mm -hmm. Yes. He's my favorite kind of guest. One question, two minute answer. We're going to have a good time. <laughs> and you are, sir. I am Elijah Bakari. Huh? I like to insist that people say Elijah the way I've said it. Elijah. Yes, thank you. Oh, you're doing so well. <laughs> <laughs> so I am currently uh, operations and research okay. at Policy Action Initiative. I like the way my colleague has already explained mm -hmm. what we do. Therefore, Absolutely. I can literally take exactly one minute to introduce myself. <laughs> yes, but really research and operations. So I, my focus is especially on research, you know, what is going on around, uh, around, you know, development, around policy and all that. And what can we do so that we can also have those discussions about how we can also have the same impact within our society. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So we say charity begins at home, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just recently had uh, the conclusion of the COP28, that's the climate conference that was happening in Dubai, and it was concluded yesterday. That is Sunday, the third day of December. Now, one of the things that was mentioned was, um, or rather critics, let me not call them critics, let me call them activists. Activists, because mm. we were given a healthy amount of money amounting to approximately 680 billion Kenyan shillings. That's like 4.5 six, seven up or billion in dollars, yeah, American dollars, to curb certain things. And, and they, the president or his excellency mentioned two ma major sectors, that is agriculture and energy, right? However, activists are confused, or they're saying that we should have this money going more into adapting because we just had a drought a year ago the president came into power facing a drought situation and now we are having the el nino phenomena so according to policy do you think these activists are right even before we go to the floods right now before i read out some numbers we talk about how mps were lost in in tana <laughs> eh. like before we talk about all that just tell me the policies around that yes actually now you have to look at it from this point of view 
First of all, we, we have to admit that Africa only contributes 3% to global emissions. And mm. if we come to Kenya specifically, because you are not among the top industrialized nations in Africa, mm -hmm. it's about 0.15% mm -hmm. of global emissions. So in this case, it means that mitigation mm -hmm. is not a very, very big factor. Mitigation is about reducing emissions. Mm -hmm. In climate, there is mitigation mm -hmm. and there is adaptation. Mm -hmm. So mitigation is not a very big factor. So adaptation should, wear, should be where the focus is. And when you look at what they say about adaptation mm -hmm. is, Africa as a continent, we require $300 billion each year to address climate change mm -hmm. in order to carry out these adaptation activities. And we are very lucky in our country, Kenya, it's mm -hmm. very, very different from countries like Nigeria or, or Algeria or the ones that have, that were blessed with very many mm -hmm. oil deposits. So in this case, in our case, we have already transitioned to renewable energy. 80% mm -hmm. of our grid comes from geothermal and hydro, mm -hmm. which is renewable energy. And when you look at it, what they mean by adaptation is we need funding for in order for us to switch from traditional agriculture. Mm -hmm. Because remember that agriculture is the largest eco contributor to GDP mm -hmm. in our country. It's the largest employer, mm -hmm. even if many young people don't like working in farms. Ew. But it does. It, uh -huh. it, it does because that's where our food comes. And most young people in the rural areas where most people live, that's where they stay. So when they talk about adaptation is how are we going to transition to smart agriculture? How are we going to help communities that are in the northern parts of Kenya? I know people always think that Kenya revolves around Nairobi, <laughs> a little bit of Mombasa and Diani where you go to the beach <coughs> and enjoy. Mm -hmm. But majority, the, not majority, but a substantial population stay above the equator mm -hmm. where the conditions are very arid. Mm -hmm. And in this case, their main economic activity is livestock rearing. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to help them adapt to this new change in climate? Mm -hmm. And that may mean, for example, if communities are keeping cattle, they have to transition and start planting mm -hmm. sorghum, indigenous crops. They have to transition their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about adaptation in our case, it's about smart agriculture, mm -hmm. helping those co communities transition to a new way of living aside mm -hmm. from pastoralism, and also helping people who live in urban informal settlements by building good drainage. Mm -hmm. Because remember that whenever floods happen, mm -hmm. I used to live in Madare back in the day when I was hustling, mm -hmm. and it's very, very tough. You can't the even Empire, go to- The the lion, <laughs> the champion, the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's very, very hard, imagine, even to go to school. And many people, actually, a lot of school hours are, are lost, a lot of economic hours are lost whenever it floods. So are we going also to help them adapt? We are mm. going to build better drainage. If it's people in Mombasa, you remember like there was a time oh, Mombasa yeah. was, the ocean had already come to had the migrated. city <laughs> Nasik Chambo. Uh -huh. it's just two weeks ago. Mm. So adaptation also in that case. How are we going to build sustainable infrastructure in areas that are near the coastal, near the ocean mm -hmm. or near the lakeside? Because you know that due to the change in conventional rainfall patterns, these mm -hmm. places are going to have more rainfall than before. So the current existing infrastructure mm -hmm. cannot handle that. So they are right in that case. Mm -hmm. Our focus should be there. The adaptative. Yes. Um, now, the same question, but I want to switch it up a bit. So what are we doing right now? So the 680 billion lands at our doorstep. How do we deal with El Nino as it comes? And of course, you know, extreme climate change now caters for both floods and, and drought. Right, exactly. So today we're complaining it's raining too much. Tomorrow it's, it's we don't have enough food. It's going so how do, we, how do we do that? So it's like you actually taking it right out of my mind exactly how I have it, <laughs> which is Elijah interesting. Is because <laughs> 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 this is what happens. Uh -huh. I, I think it's so common in this country to hear uh, it's raining, oh, it's flooding, government help us, all this, all this, all that. Then within a few months, in fact, sometimes it can happen even within two, three months. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, we are starving, we are starving, the land is dry, our animals are dying, and all this, and all this, and all this. Mm -hmm. So we always have, uh, we have periods of excessively a lot of, a lot of water that causes flooding, mm -hmm. which uh, wrecks havoc on lives. Then we follow shortly with uh, very dry conditions that again wreck havoc on our lives, we lose lives, and and cattle and all that. Mm -hmm. So m some of the ways we can use this 680 billion to address perhaps this particular problem, number one is we need to look at already proven technologies, one of which is just water harvesting, mm -hmm. as basic as that. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have water harvesting, 
you already have less water that can flow to cause flooding because you know we're already harvesting it and storing it somewhere. Mm -hmm. Whether this is, of course, the options that we're used to traditionally, we have options of dams, mm -hmm. that's number one. But now we even have uh, technologies that allow us to put this water in tanks that is much cheaper. There's some tanks we have where the, the outside is made of steel, that the inside is made of rubber, and some of them can store as much as two million mm -hmm. liters of water, mm -hmm. right? All you need is just flat land and all that. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have such technologies, you can harvest this water so that during the periods of dryness when we have drought people will have access to water mm -hmm. right so people will not say we are dying we're dying no because they'll have access to water whether it is in dams or these modern technology tanks that's number one right mm -hmm. so when it's flooding that's what we should do so that when it's uh, so you know so that when it's dry we can now use up that water but then if I take this even uh, even further this is a country where the places when it's dry we still have rivers that are running have we thought of investing in, uh, in irrigation? I think the president's mind is in the right direction mm -hmm. because he's talking about agriculture and energy. Mm -hmm. Here are two suggestions on that. Number mm -hmm. one, when it comes to agriculture, our rivers flow. Mm -hmm. Kenyans are excessively educated Excessive. in terms of agriculture. Mm -hmm. You go to the university, you're not short of people who know how to irrigate dry lands. Our Kenyans have gone as far as Israel mm -hmm. to study how exactly do you grow food in the desert. Kenya isn't even a desert. We should mm. not have food insecurity. Mm. These people have the knowledge, the know-how. And many of them are youth. You just need to engage them. They mm -hmm. will show you how we grow food in the desert because mm -hmm. they already know it. And we're not even a desert. It's semi-desert. Mm -hmm. So that's another place to invest in, in irrigation agriculture, right? Mm -hmm. When it comes to energy, did you know that in Kenya, we have uh, more capacity for geothermal power than we require to use as a country. Mm -hmm. In terms wow. of the, the capability, if, if, we, if we were to harness all the energy that is available for geothermal, we have more power than we need ourselves. Mm -hmm. So that means that's another area we can invest. We can invest in geothermal power. And you know, the good thing with geothermal power is it's not dependent on rainfall. Mm -hmm. See, a hydro power can be a challenge sometimes because when it gets dry, then hydro power, uh, mm -hmm. we're not sure we'll have that power. Mm -hmm. But with geothermal power, it's available all year round. We need to invest in the drilling of more wells, mm -hmm. all right, so that we can now push our, our grid to possibly more than 95% geothermal, if not uh, 99, 100. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, rather, let me say renewable, not just geothermal, because this is possible. And those are areas that we can look into investing. You can look also into investing in, in solar power. Mm -hmm. Now, I have big thoughts on solar power. I know people talk about large, large land being used for solar power. <laughs> there's, there's simple things we can adapt. Took a breath. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's because it's I familiarize myself with all arguments as regards, uh, you know, to do this or not to do this. So one thing we can do with solar power, be a building like the one we're in and all the buildings that are around, say, Nairobi and, you know, whatever urban areas or just rural areas, as long as there's a building right there, that is land that, that, that the area of that building, the roof of that building, is a place where a solar panel can be placed mm -hmm. or solar panels can be placed so that we can harvest energy. Mm -hmm. Did you know in a single second, mm -hmm. the earth receives more solar insulation than we use in every form of energy throughout the year? Wow. Every form. So if you take coal, you take gas, you take, uh, we are still using solar, wind, hydro, geothermal. If you take all of that, the amount that falls on the earth in one second mm -hmm. is more than we use in a whole year. Wow. That just shows you the potential that we also have right there. Mm -hmm. And your average household, if it was to be fully covered in solar panels, mm -hmm. would produce three times as much power as it needs. So there'd even be an excess to send out. Wow. Mm -hmm. So there's so many areas we can invest in and we need to ensure we have policies, again, mm -hmm. that ensure it's very easy and people just want to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. But before I get back to you, let me just... Um, just on solar power alone, guys, uh, I, 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 this disclaimer is just on our opinion, but the facts are not debatable kindly. Kindly. You're f they can Google, right? Yes. Google is your friend. <laughs> <laughs> Please <laughs> confirm. Your friend. Yes. Hmm. There's a notion, okay, we can have to go ground, solar panels are for people who live in leafy suburbs, mm. so it's not for everyone. Is that, how can we demystify that? How can we get that out of our system? Because it's not really true, it's just cine panel too. Yes, so the challenge that has been previously with solar panels is that the initial cost seems high. Mm. But when you calculate in the, wrong, in the long run, the savings are significantly higher. Mm -hmm. Especially right now, uh, when there has been an increase in electricity prices, if somebody could invest 
I'd, I'd highly recommend that. But one suggestion that I would definitely give, uh, you know, with the 680 billion is mm -hmm. you can actually invest in plans where, rather, you can build mechanisms and systems where people can actually have these things installed. All right, and one pay for them slowly and over time. There are actually already companies that are doing that, mm -hmm. right? You can pay with them. Uh, you can pay for them slowly over time, mm -hmm. or have them installed for people. And remember what I said mm -hmm. about three, three, three times as much power as a place needs is what you can produce from a single roof. Mm -hmm. So you can have, you know. Some of it just stay with whoever, with whoever owns the roof mm -hmm. and then the excess can be exported to the rest of the grid. Now, what Kenya needs to do is adapt our grid to also allow us to inject power. It's something we have not done. We need to work on our policy mm -hmm. to ensure that, uh, you know, how will that work? That's number one. Mm -hmm. Then number two, we also need to work on our technology in terms of how our grid is so we can do that. One city that has perhaps done this in a very excellent way should be Lancaster, mm -hmm. California. These people invested so much in solar power right now they ended up having excess electricity, which they have even used to produce hydrogen that is powering wow. their local buses. Now, California, just for the record, is not anywhere within the tropics, in case someone does not know if they did not pay attention <laughs> in <laughs> geography <laughs> class. Shade has been thrown <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Uh -huh. I am just remind, your geography teacher would be so proud. Uh, yes, wow. I hope she's watching me. <laughs> Hi, Malimu. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, 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 but in Kenya, we're within the tropics. That means we get a lot more sun and it's reliable throughout the year. Mm -hmm. So those are just some things we can, we can do. Set up the mechanisms that allow people to pay slowly because in the long run, mm -hmm. we will benefit greatly as a, as a country. Mm -hmm. We will have a lot of energy that is really much cheaper, mm -hmm. reliable. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, Brian, mm -hmm. now I am torn. I have two very wonderful questions I want to ask you, but <laughs> I, don't know if, I don't know if I can marry them mm -hmm. or just ask them separately, but let's start with this. I will ignore this first part, guys, and we just talked about it with my co-host, that is Brian Sako 101 on all platforms. So there was a question posed to the spokesperson of the government concerning the attendance of the COP28 in Dubai. Apparently there are too many people born. Like Munenda wa Kenya, kwani ipa DM bana, munapua kila moto. That's the part you can kindly ignore. That was my opinion. I was just echoing something I heard. However, what he did say that uh, not only the public center went or the people, you know, representing the government, but also youth groups and women and NGOs and, and you know, people uh, from the Ministry of Energy, I'm guessing climate and gender and all these wonderful things. So how, how what kind of policies do you expect that maybe will be implemented or introduced by these particular groups? Let's touch on the youth and gender. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, actually, that's a very, very, very big problem because mm -hmm. one thing that we have in this country is that, and many young people actually, when you go to the streets, they usually complain is, we hear that there is summit, there is this summit, like the Africa Climate Summit in Th September. It just happened, But yes. no one, even For when, I when you go down to Arkes, when you cross Tom Boyalen on the other side, you ask them, do you know what's happening at KCC? No, no one has involved us. Mm. And as a young person, imagine, you are you hear something is happening there's a lot of climate there's 680 billion the other day so many foreigners came and they were in five star hotels and no one tells us how does this benefit us and it becomes very problematic in order for you to involve them in all the solutions that my friend has actually mentioned very very well because we know that for you to have climate adaptation or climate action or even environmental action because another thing is you know, we don't want to be climate activists mm -hmm. because climate action is only about reducing emissions. Mm -hmm. Environmental action is about everything, pollution, mm -hmm. biodiversity loss, mm -hmm. habitat loss, deforestation. So we want to be environmental activists in mm -hmm. that case, not mm -hmm. climate activists. But for people who are wondering, how then can I become an environmental activist when no one is involved in me? when no one is coming and telling us what is happening. So, sorry for so the first thing. Those, those two don't marry each other, the, the environmental activists and the climate, because one is yeah. another. If I cut the trees, it's going to affect the climate, no? Yeah, they marry each other, but you know when you are just a climate activist, the scope is very, very limited. Ah. It's not like when you are an environmental, because environmental deals with everything. And like I said in the beginning, mm -hmm. that our emissions are also very negligible. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't even be complaining about emissions mm -hmm. when it comes to our country because we know that our emissions are 0.15% of the world's total. Wow. So it doesn't really, really, like it's just a it's drop like in a the dent. ocean. Mm. Figuratively, a drop in the ocean. Mm -hmm. So in this case that 
one thing that we need for young people is we have the Climate Change Amendment Act that was signed into law by President Ruto in August. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very good document. And one of the places, one of the sections, it mentions that the government should set up an awareness program to involve young people and to educate them and to sensitize them about climate and environment in general. And in this case, they didn't go into specifics, but ideally what now we should follow up is how do we do this awareness? We mm -hmm. do it by contextualizing the message. Mm -hmm. If you're going to go to West Pokot, if you're going to go to Samburu, mm -hmm. you're not going to go there and tell them about rising sea levels. Wow. I mean, most of them have never even seen an ocean, mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean that they are backward or they aren't involved. It's mm -hmm. that their environment is very different. Mm -hmm. So in this case, you're going to talk to them about what? Pastoralism, mm -hmm. about adapting to new socioeconomic lifestyles. Mm -hmm. If you're going to go to the lake side, we are going to talk about flooding. We are mm -hmm. going to talk about the prevalence of invasive species like the water hyacinth. Mm -hmm. If we go to Mombasa, if we go to Lamu, the coastal areas, we are going to talk about the rising sea levels. Mm -hmm. If we go to Nairobi, we are going to talk about the drainage mm -hmm. because this is an urban built up environment. Mm -hmm. So it's about contextualizing the message when it comes to youth awareness. Mm -hmm. Another thing when it comes to gender mm -hmm. mainstreaming is that because climate change affects us sadly women more than men mm -hmm. because you know that in our country it's still a patriarchal country mm -hmm. and majority of the times it is women who usually do household chores mm -hmm. so how, how is a woman going to go and do cleaning how is a woman going to go and do cooking mm -hmm. if there is no water in the household mm -hmm. if she's going to be forced to go and walk around 15 kilometers to go and fetch water mm -hmm. then it means that a lot of her time is going to be wasted in mm, order to complete mm. a task which she could have done it easily in the past mm -hmm. so it prevents her from going and starting a salon or doing some grocery business. And at the end of the day, the poverty increases because we know that women, most of the time, contrary to popular opinion, mm -hmm. are the breadwinners of the family. Wow. Because the man has the man, yes, but it's a woman who ensures that the children eat. It's a woman who ensures that huyu everything makofi. is there. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it's a reality. So in this case about gender mainstreaming, one thing that we have, one mm -hmm. piece of documentation that we have, policy that we have in place is the carbon credit trading and benefit sharing bill. And in that bill, it says that they are going to set up a scheme where, where companies, polluting companies mm -hmm. that pollute the Coca-Cola, the big companies, the ones that are responsible, even named by the UNFCC, mm -hmm. the United Nations Framework for, for Climate Convention, as the biggest climate change emitters, they are going to come and they are going to fund initiatives that capture carbon from the atmosphere. So in this case, they are going to set up a carbon credit trading and benefit sharing authority. And in this case, if you are a young person, you have an initiative, like for example, planting mangroves, mm -hmm. planting trees, if you have even an adaptation, because you know that adaptation can be a form mm -hmm. of carbon capture if it's done in the right way, like my friend explained here. Mm -hmm. So in this case, you're going to register the initiatives that you have, and then the companies are going to come and select from the database. So that is, I think, one of the best ways, one of the pieces of policies that we have that are going to assist in that. But outside of that also, we also need to streamline our stock exchange system. And the reason why I'm saying that mm. is because we know that climate <coughs> financing has three innovative models. Mm -hmm. There's the carbon markets, there's the debt for climate swaps, that is exchanging debt for climate investments, and we have green bonds. Mm -hmm. And green bonds is very, very, very innovative and very, very exciting because what happens in green bonds is that companies are going to sell their bonds at very, very cheap prices, mm -hmm. and young people or any person, not even young, if you are old but you are interested mm -hmm. in making money, not even just the environment, mm -hmm. you can invest in the green bonds. And you know that Nigeria, since Nigeria rolled it out, it was the first African country in 2017 when they rolled it out, mm -hmm. at least $29 million has been able to be exchanged to the beneficiaries. Yeah. And when you look at it globally, that's just 0.4% of the global total. Mm -hmm. So it means that green bonds have already become a big thing when you come to Europe, when you come to America, and it's going to become a very, very innovative thing when it comes here to Africa. But what we need to do is we need to streamline our stock exchange systems to ensure that young people can easily invest in it for example, through mobile money, through M-Pesa. Yeah. Instead of going and paying, going through the bureaucratic process of having a bank account and investing in that, mm -hmm. why can't I buy the bonds through M-Pesa? Mm -hmm. Just like the way I can ensure it, that's just like the way I can fuliza. Mm -hmm. So it's about, it, when it comes to the policies, it's generally about contextualizing the message in terms of awareness, implementing a system that is going to allow for the carbon markets, for carbon markets, for carbon credit trading, mm -hmm. and also, 
investing, not investing, but streamlining processes that allow for innova innovative financing models like the green bonds, mm -hmm. so that young people can get opportunities from these places. Mm -hmm. And the good thing is we have these frameworks in place. It is just a matter of implementation and a little bit of streamlining. Okay. Yes. Ah, green bonds is the thing. <laughs> it's the thing. It's the thing. the urban setting possibly have different requirements. So True. how can we feel confident that once these funds are received that they're going to be used properly? How is there a way that the government or policy makers, let me say policy makers, can be so transparent that I as a lay person, Mimi Kama Wanjiro, Mimi Kama Mtua Ground, I understand. Mm -hmm. Yes, apparently there's a something called COP28 that happened and, and we got a, 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 an amount and it's going here and here and here. So maybe I'll stop with that. Well, I'd say two things. First, I think education, letting people know that this is available mm -hmm. and how exactly it works, that's number one. But number two, specifically to answer your question, mm -hmm. I think counties. Mm -hmm. In terms of, as he mentions the different regions, each of these regions are in specific counties that are different. Mm -hmm. It might be a bit difficult perhaps to coordinate all this from a central place. Perhaps to have a county, uh, you know, to account for it all in a central place, just to know what is happening, have a central system uh, within government that looks at everything, yes. But in terms of the distribution of these funds and what they do, I think counties, okay, should be a solution and specifically uh, groups that are already working in the counties to provide this solution. So know exactly how much money is being given to each and how that money is being spent. Mm -hmm. So you can't just come and solve the problems that exist in Nairobi or Mombasa and, you know, just the main city, just the main urban area, so to say. You need, if you're really going to reach the people on the ground, you really need to use the counties in order to be able to provide this money to people on, rather, to provide this money to people who can offer solutions on the ground. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, if you can employ this on the counties, first, first do your, you know, do, you, do your study if they've not done it yet. Mm -hmm. Figure out what is the problem in, you know, whatever county, this county, in that county. What, what kind of solutions are needed in this county, in that county? Well, in some, count, in some counties, we'll need to solve issues around water. In some counties, we are, we are solving issues in the opposite direction. Mm. Some countries will struggle with being dry. Others will struggle with, you know, with too much rain. Mm. So how, how, you know, how, how, how are we going to solve issues around this so that, that that would be my suggestion we can set up systems within the counties mm -hmm. all right there are groups already that exist that are, 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 are acting uh, around certain problems are occurring get this to them fund these groups so that this action can be taken and if you are wondering how you will do your civic education these same groups provide you with all of that mm -hmm. so you don't have to start setting up new government funds for mm. let's educate people about what we're doing and this is important because even if say you sp part of this i know people will think about tree planting mm -hmm. this country happens to have a lot of tree planting but not enough tree growing and the wow. reason sometimes we don't have tree growing is because mm -hmm. we plant trees Hashtag social media, mm -hmm. green initiative, yes. you know, Holiday. saving the planet hey. one tree at a time. Uh -huh. But it is one tree at a time for one day. Oh, and no. We are gone. No mm -hmm. one watches over those trees. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, especially if you're doing it in an area you do not live in, no one watches over those trees. Mm -hmm. So if you could have people who are living there educated on why it's important. Because there are people who just keep seeing you growing trees. They don't understand why. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, there was a whole national holiday where we spent time growing trees. Yes. No, planting. Okay, planting trees, sorry, yes. not growing. Uh -huh. Planting trees. Uh -huh. But some people have uh, some people have not watered a single tree since. Mm -hmm. So those were trees that were just planted, but they'll not grow. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to solve things, and, and the issue of trees is just one. There's so much more when it comes to climate that we can discuss. Mm -hmm. But if we're going to really provide solutions, the people who are handling these things need to get that education. Mm -hmm. So counties, systems, local groups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So devolution is, is on the right track, huh? There's a difference between 
one thing we have to be very careful is mm -hmm. when it comes to the international community, it is very easy for them to pledge they are going to give money. When the Paris Agreement, the one that is that now all the focus is on, mm. that based all the climate. Because you see, like, for us to have COP, it had to have the UNFCC in, in 1992. Mm -hmm. After that, we had the Kyoto Protocol, then now we have the Paris Agreement mm -hmm. of 2015. Under that, developed nations committed, they're going to give $100 billion each year to the global south countries mm -hmm. for them to adapt to the climatic, the change in climatic conditions. But you know that not even a single shilling has been given since then. So are we sure that this $4.6 billion that has been promised to mm -hmm. Kenya is going to be given? Because we have this culture in the wow. international community of mm -hmm. making pledges, but they don't give the funds. Mm -hmm. And another problem is, let's say even if they give the funds, mm -hmm. we know that in Africa we have always had this problem of debt or aid doesn't get to the people whom it deserves. Mm -hmm. And it's called, there's a book that Dambisa Moyo wrote, a Zambian intelligent author. She wrote about dead aid. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea was, since, since 1960, when the first country, African country got independence, what <coughs> around $2 trillion has been given in aid, mm -hmm. but not even 1% of that got to the people it deserved. Mm -hmm. So for example, if we go to Kibera today, how much aid has been given? Yeah, you said aid Imagine. and Kibera is the first place because money has been pumped into that place. Organizations Absolutely. have been set up and, mm. and hey. Oh my Everybody day. should be driving a Bugatti Everyone. there. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> but unfortunately, that is not the case. Uh -huh. So another thing is we have to ensure, uh, we have to change this framework, the international financing framework, to ensure that whenever money is released, it gets to the people it deserves. Because we know that, for example, that 680 billion, mm -hmm. it's a, either going to be given to the government mm -hmm. or it's going to be given to organizations that are already international organizations. They are not Kenyan organizations. Oh, no. So that money is not going to a Kenyan entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. It's not going to a Kenyan young person. It's going, not going to a Kenyan woman in the village. Mm -hmm. So that money still remains within themselves. Or if it's going to, to be given to the government, again, it comes with the condition that the mm -hmm. government has to work mm -hmm. with one of those organizations mm -hmm. oh, in wow. implementing the project. Mm -hmm. So the money never gets to the real, real person on the ground. So okay. again, that is another thing when you talk about the money, we have to mm -hmm. ensure it becomes part of the conversation. Yes. All right, thank you. But I, I really could go on and on and on <laughs> with both of you. you. You're just either we're debating or you're <laughs> pumping with knowledge. Either way, it's very refreshing this Monday morning, and I appreciate it. But Brian and Elijah, I think we have to stop it at here. Guys, I might have to release them. But trust and believe, Mimi na green bones. <laughs> <laughs> I found money, guys. I, I found should. gold. I found <laughs> gold. <laughs> All right. Thank you again so much for coming. Maybe just one more time tell us who you are and what you do in seconds, not not minutes. Uh -huh. uh, Elijah. So Elijah Bakari, uh -huh. Operations and Research Policy Action Initiative. And Brian. Brian Kithinji, uh -huh. Executive Director, Policy Action Initiative. All right. Thank you, Valentin Mboy at Kalami Val for Y254. Thank you so very much for allowing me to host you guys. It's always, always, always such a supreme pleasure. I love spending time with you. Even though I cannot see you, I can feel you. I can feel your presence at Y54 on Facebook, Y54 channel on X, Y54 underscore channel on the gram. And now, uh, Brian Sakwa 101 is about to come in with a conversation talking about safe festivities or how best to face the festive season safely. I don't know. Come on, yeah? You understand? You understand? In a sentence, how do you advise people to safely enjoy the, fi the, festi the festive season? Yeah. Don't drink and drive. Simple. Wise man. I, that Elijah. was my exact thought. That just says <laughs> it. Especially that. Uh -huh. yeah. And please, whenever you're going out or staying in, always have Akili with you. Like, don't leave it at home. I think that's it for now. Bye-bye.